This movie describes how to use the family relationships activity with your students. This is one of the geometric functions activities in which students create, manipulate, and experience function concepts by treating geometric transformations as functions with points as their variables. In this activity, students construct and investigate the rotation, dilation, and translation families. Their objectives are to compare the relative rate of change of the variables, locate fixed points, use a restricted domain to compare the shape and size of the domain and range, and use these observations to compare the families with each other. In this movie, I'll use the rotation family as the example, beginning with a new sketch. I construct a center point and label it C, and create a new parameter for the angle of rotation, which I name theta, and give an angle of 135 degrees. I then create an independent variable, which I'll make a different color from the center point. I'll make it red, and give it a label of y. X is too boring. And I'm ready to rotate now. From the Transform menu, I'll choose Rotate. Sketchpad marks C as the center point. I click on the angle theta to make it the angle by which the rotation takes place. Click Rotate to complete the rotation and give the new dependent variable its own color. Let's make it blue and its own label using function notation. So that will be the rotation about center point C by angle theta of independent variable y. So now we have proper function notation for our rotated variable. I'm ready to go ahead and investigate the questions in the worksheet. First question asks me about the relative rate of change of the independent and dependent variables in any fixed points. And I can notice some things here, but I'll certainly be helped a lot in noticing these things if I turn tracing on for the points. Let's see what happens when I drag the independent variable straight down. The dependent variable moves up and to the right. And I need to do a little bit of thinking to connect that with this angle of 135 degrees. And let me, uh, let me try some other directions to the right. It moves up and to the left and so forth. If I move up and to the left, where is it going to go? Uh, it's going to go straight down. So I'm going to experiment a little bit and try to answer this question in a reasonable way. I'm also going to look for a fixed point, which is a point where the independent and dependent variable come together. If I move y directly towards the uh, dependent variable, I end up sort of being pulled towards the center point here, which looks like it is a fixed point because all both of the variables have come together at that location. So that's a fixed point. I don't seem to be able to find any other fixed points. So that's pretty interesting. OK, so I continue with my work on the worksheet. The next step is to restrict the domain to a polygon. So let me erase the old traces and use the polygon tool to create a polygon for myself. And let me make it with uh, some sides that are at angles here that are sort of interesting angles. And I'll also select the parents of that polygon to hide them so that I don't get confused by the vertices of my polygon. So now I can restrict the independent variable to this polygon. From the Edit menu, I choose Merge Point to Hexagon. And uh, I need to use the Marker tool to predict the corresponding range. OK, so I know I'm starting from here. I think it's going to go let's see down into the right, 135 degrees around from there. I think it's going to start out going up. Let me make that as a rough guess. I think that this is going to go up some, 
And then after it goes up just a little bit, it's going to make a right-hand turn. So I think it's going to come over here. And then it's going to go here, here. I think it's going to come out this way. So let me see how close I came. I can check that by animating my point. Well, I had some, uh, some aspects of it right, but I certainly didn't get the angles very good. And I also didn't, uh, didn't get the lengths of these very, very close to what they're supposed to be. So I need to try this again and pay more attention, perhaps, to the relative angles here and here. And also to making the lengths the same, because in the process of doing this, I'm realizing that the shape of the domain and range, if the speeds are the same, the shape of the domain and range are going to be the same also. So that my work on this is going to help me to answer the later questions as well. And finally, question six, construct a new member of the same family. To do that, I can do that as easily as, uh, as changing the angle, using a different angle, erasing the old traces, and seeing what, uh, what sort of relationship I now have between the speed and direction of the two variables. Okay, so after completing my investigation, the rotation function, I fill in the, I have one more step to do, which is to fill in the characteristic table that describes the characteristics of this particular function. I give the function notation and so forth, relative speed, direction, and fixed points. And one of my observations on the shape relative shape of the restricted domain and the corresponding range are that they are the same shape and the same size, and I know that means that they're congruent. So that's an important aspect, the relative shape of, uh, of understanding what this family is and how it works. So that completes the movie on using the family relationships activity with your students.